Three, two, one. This is The Jungle, an up-close, unvarnished look inside leadership and business strategy. We wade into the real-world leader's face and explore what they do to create a path forward, because that's what business is. Wild, exciting, it's The Jungle. Welcome, everybody, back to The Jungle. Derek, we're in a, uh, a new locale again. Yeah, I, I don't know why you let the students run wild like this, but it, it seems like they did an okay job. So we are we're recording our first podcast ever in our new studio space. Shout, shout out to Justice. Shout out to Justice and Gloria and Hannah from our our LBS uh, media team, and we've stood up a podcast, an actual honest to God studio for the first time, and we have two amazing guests. We'll be seeing. It'll be interesting to see how the space actually develops. We might actually put new things on in the background. We'll, we'll turn the TV on in the, in the next episode, I think, is we'll have the TV on. Uh, maybe we're going to get some nice, like, plants here. Do we do plants? Bottle of Bronco Nest right over there? Maybe. Yeah. You know? Um, but we have, uh, we're, we're lucky to have two phenomenal guests here, uh, two guests that we know uh, really well. And I, I, I feel like we we're going to start off, we have to start off, I mean, everybody probably knows you guys, they see your faces and they say, these two gentlemen are, are famous, but uh, we have Tom Garrett and Justin Murray, who are two executives in residence at Sleeping Giant Capital. So uh, behind the scenes, Doug, we're going behind, behind the, scenes. the scenes, behind the scenes of, of Sleeping Giant. So folks in the podcast are, are probably aware and heard some some stuff that we're doing out of Sleeping Giant. And uh, now we're going to start maybe having a few episodes where we're going to go a little bit more behind the scenes of what's going on with Sleeping Giant. What is this company all about? How does this company uh, work in terms of buying companies and growing them in West Michigan? And so we have. Tom and Justin, who are uh, two executives in residence who are going to be searching for acquiring and growing a business in partnership with Sleeping Giant. So excited to have you guys. First time in the podcast room. How do you feel about that? This is great. First podcast I've ever been on. So I feel... uh feel honored. Thanks yeah. for having us. Yeah. There's only one time to make that a first, Justin. So yeah. thanks for sharing that right. with us. Yep. Tom, is, is this like the fourth pot, fourth, fifth, 20th I've, podcast for you? I have never podcasted, but I'm uh, willing to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any podcasts you listen to or is this, this, this new territory? This would be number one. Okay. Justin, do you listen to any podcasts I besides do. ours? I do. Yours, uh, Smartless. Okay. Okay. Um, those are probably just a little bit of Joe Rogan. Okay. Derek, what, what would you say is your favorite podcast these days? All in, yeah. You you hooked me on that one. Yeah, it's it's really good. That those four like that with Tremoth and yep, yeah, it's yeah. So it, it's good. It, it's it's really it's really it's t- weekly. It's topical. It's like the news, but from four different perspectives. Yeah, we should learn from them and do better. We should. We should. Um, so we're excited to have a Tom and Justin uh, in all seriousness on this, and excited to be working with you guys with our, our sleeping giant capital hats on. And I know the, the we're excited about it, but our, our invest sleeping giant capital is investors are excited about it. And our students are excited about it because they've got a chance to start already working with you guys on, um, so making so you guys successful. How about executive and residence, Doug, explain that for the listeners real quick. I'm not sure everyone's going to know that what that is. So, and then, yeah, I, and then I want you to ask them why they chose to do it. Okay. You just have, tell me the questions I need to ask. Okay. 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 So, Doug. So, okay. So, executive in residence. All right. Executive what, what in residence. That, so, what what is an executive in residence, and and you know what what is how does that fit into Sleeping Giant uh, Capital? So, Sleeping Giant Capital is a, a a private investment fund that looks to acquire and grow businesses, uh, mostly here in West Michigan. And uh, to do that, uh, Sleeping Giant Capital brings the capital to be able to acquire those businesses that are are coming up for sale. Uh, and then we also bring in an executive who is going to now run that business after the owner, after the owner sells. And an executive in residence is an individual who has decided that this path of entrepreneurship is for them and they're going to be an entrepreneurship, but through acquisition and they become an executive in residence in sleeping giant and they search full time to acquire a business. And that, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what that means in terms of the day to day practice. So, so let me break that down for you. So we find highly, highly talented individuals that we empower to buy companies and we back them. And so Justin and Tom are those individuals and they decide, I'll use a quote that we heard today, 
they decide to, to, to burn the boats and then the bay and, and go on land and attack this. So yeah. both of you answer this one at a time. Tom, we'll start with you. What made you decide that this was a path for you? Well, I have experience doing these types of things. And uh, the one thing I know for certain is it's extremely difficult to do on your own. There's just so much to be able to, to tackle, so many details. And if it's really just your objective to uh, acquire a small business, something that someone you have a relationship with, et cetera, that's one path. Uh, but if you really want to go after a larger uh, opportunity, uh, having the resources available, the work that's involved to get it done, the capital to be able to back that, uh, that's all part of that uh, formula for success because it is, it is a lot of work. Justin, how about you? Okay. Yeah, so for me, I think, uh, you know, I think back to even growing up, walking down streets, looking at businesses, driving around town, looking at businesses, and always saying, man, I wonder how does that business do it? What do they do? How do they do it? Are they successful? I've always had an interest. Um, so it's always been a dream. I think what I've ever, always struggled with is how to make it a reality. And I think, um, so it's always been a, a great idea, but how do you execute? And I think that's where this partnership has really helped me is to put um, a little bit more structure around something that's very ambiguous. Similar to Tom, I've got some experience at the corporate level going through M&A deals, um, being involved in really critical projects for big companies. So I've always had this entrepreneurial mindset, mindset entrepreneurial mindset, um, but um, have, have never really figured out my path. And I feel like this is um, a great way to do it. I'm excited to partner with uh, both of you guys and the investors and um, thrilled to, to grow a company within West Michigan. So uh, maybe we start off, uh, we'll start off with you, Tom, in terms of background. What, what, what preceded uh, you becoming an executive in residence with Sleeping Giant? Um, tell us a little bit about your background. Well, I was at a company in town, Total Plastics, uh, for 33 years. And um, it, I, when I joined the company, we were doing about $8 million in revenue. We grew it up to a, around $140 million, uh, near the end. And uh, it was a great experience. There, I learned a lot. Uh, we were privately held. We were publicly held for 20 years by a company based out of Chicago. We were part of a private equity group. And so the, the different ownership, the, you know, the different um, challenges of, of growth and uh, different corporate structures, I really learned a lot from that. And I also learned after the fourth time I went through the sale of the business, it was time for me to go uh, do something on my own. And uh, this has given me that opportunity because you're going through life, you're raising kids, you know, you're, you know, taking care of your family, uh, breaking out and doing something like this. Um, it, it, when is that available to you? When, when do you have the, uh, the opportunity to be able to take that stand? And, and I have that opportunity now. So that, that's, that's where I'm at. And, and, and you didn't mention, which is good that, you know, you're actually a Chippewa, but you know, it's, we're we'll still work with you as uh, a chip. Fair enough. Right. Uh, Justin, how about your background? What, what, what was your background like before you came here? Sure. So also a rival. I'm a Spartan, um, and and also a high school rival, Doug, of your uh, yeah. of your Okemos oh, Wolves yeah. these don't, days. Don't so go down, we'll go down the rivals with Doug. Um, so what did you, did you play sports in? You I, play, oh, I sure oh, did. See, yeah, stop basketball. it, you guys. Yeah, stop. We might have to guys, stop this for some one-on-one. It's, one. it's gonna go too too far <laughs> down memory lane. We don't want to go that far. Um, okay. No, it's all good. So uh, for me, I, I graduated from Michigan State with a degree in finance, um, worked for um, a local, uh, I guess, regional financial firm, Plant Moran, for a number of years, uh, went back, did my MBA, and then came out um, and worked uh, for a large private consumer goods company called Mars Incorporated, and then moved from there over to Stryker, where the last uh, seven years I've spent in different marketing and, and M&A roles. So uh, have been a bit of a jack of all trades, have always aspired to um, go through kind of this general management track. So I feel like as you get into a smaller business, um, that will be necessary is to be able to wear a lot of hats. And so um, having experience in different industries and functions um, hopefully will will help me with, uh, with this next adventure. How about, um, what are you guys hoping to achieve? You know, if you've gone through this, this process of acquiring a business, growing a business, you know, what, what is it? What is your, what's your why? What's your goal here at the end of this journey? 
all, one of the things for me personally is is over the over my career one of the things that I enjoyed is building a team, growing a business, working with others. And the the further along I've gotten in my career, the more comfortable I am doing that, and the more rewarding that is. So my objective in this is to be able to find a business that we can truly scale, potentially put other acquisitions together with that, um, put a really um, solid team in place, mentor. And, uh, and be able to really enjoy that whole process of, of getting people on the same page. And uh, it's powerful when you get everybody going in the same direction, everybody working toward the same objective. Yeah, so I think my goal for this is, is to number one, have an impact, have an impact on West Michigan, um, be able to hire great talent, be able to uh, grow that talent. And I think the other piece is just to be able to take this step um, for, for me within my family and network and to be able to show people that this is a path and that it is scary, but it's um, it's a great opportunity. And just, just to show my kids that um, it's a risk worth taking. So I think for me, um, there are a lot of, a lot of goals, uh, you know, running or first, first of all, getting through the process and, and making the acquisition, but then also um, having a, a long staying impact uh, on the state of Michigan. I have, I have a little deeper question, Doug, if you don't let me hop yeah, in here. Yeah. Uh, maybe, Justin, this one's more aimed at you. Did you, when you were looking at this, did you see it as, I have to do this because of the opportunity, or I've always wanted to do this and I regret if I don't do it, and now is the chance? The latter. The latter. Yeah. I, I could see uh, myself. I mean, I, I've been, been blessed with uh, working for some great companies, um, but I could just see myself retiring and say, man, I wish I would have. And I think that's what, uh, what's really driving me through this is to, to take that leap of faith and, uh, to see how it plays out. And, and Tom, I'm going to adjust the question a little bit for you. You've already been down the road once, uh, with multiple acquisitions and growing a company. Was it more, I'm going to do this one more time and regret if I don't do one more time or how did you look at that? Or is it more, I'm more excited about the opportunity to make one more, you know, big run. This just seems like a whole lot more fun. It, it getting myself outside of my comfort zone, getting outside of what I knew and what I what I grew up with over the course of my career. I welcome the challenge. I think it'd be a lot of fun to do something completely different than I had done in the past, and um, that that's how I see it. I'm I'm uh, I'm really not in a, a, a mindset, and I've I've thought about this quite a bit about just am I just going to go play with the grandkids and uh, and uh, I love them. And I spent a lot of time with them, but I think there was a whole lot more to life. And I, I think I can balance that and feel real good about the challenge. It was probably the challenge more than anything. I, I got, Tom's got a little late night radio DJ voice going on over there. <laughs> it's really yeah. good. Yeah. Well, and Tom probably has more energy than all of us, given his, his cycling. So, yeah. makes, right. Makes us look out of shape and terrible. But yeah. anyway. Yeah. Don't make me feel bad. So what, what is, what's your, what's your lesson, um, you know, you guys are both taking a big risk, a leap of faith on this. Uh, you know, that's the entrepreneurial jump, right? That you're going to actually take that risk. What's your What's your advice or lesson or insight for other people who might be considering that that question? Now, I mean, you're kind of you're fre fresh off of that, uh, Justin. But what's your What's your insight to them? Well, I think the insight is when you start to when you start to look at it, and you say, well, what's What's the worst that's going to happen to you? You know, you're doing this for, you know, hopefully you, you find something great. And if you don't, you learn a ton and you're still marketable, you know, in the future. So um, I think it's, it's kind of working, working through that. And just, you know, there's a lot of people, even now that I've exited my uh, corporate career um, that say, man, that's, I wish I could do that. Or I wish I would do that. And they're looking at you and you can see in their eyes, this is what they really want to do, but they're not willing to take the risk. So I just say it's, it's a risk worth taking. And, um, you know, this is a great kind of format to be able to, to manage some of that risk. Cause you do have to Tom's point, you have some support, you have great mentors, you have a little bit of a structure around it. Um, so you're not alone. And, um, you know, as you talk to people, there's a lot of people that are willing to help that want to help and want to see you win. So, um, that would be, I guess, the advice to, uh, to anyone that's uh, considering this path. Uh, how about how about why would you want to do this? I mean, I mean, Derek's easy to work with. Maybe maybe not me, but um, why why would you want to do this path through Sleeping Giant versus you know you go out there on your own? We have some some great great folks that we know that have have done this individually. Um, I would say have a, are attempting to. 
uh, to do this individually, but why do this uh, with Sleeping Giant particularly? What was the the attraction for that? We all know it wasn't Doug. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't me. It was it was Derek's Canadian friendliness probably that uh, played a big part. Well, I uh, personally I, I like the creativity of involving the university, uh, you know, involving the kids from the school. I mean giving them an opportunity up front, but also the, the more there's the investment in the West Michigan business environment, there's more places for those kids to go. And, and the idea of keeping West Michigan based businesses, West Michigan based. And I think that really probably hooked me more than anything because you see so many companies that they get built and next thing you know, they're acquired by the big national and it's just, it's just a storefront. There's no investment in, in the community and the people and uh, I think it's a shame. And, and the more we're able to keep those businesses growing and uh, a part of the community, I, I think that that's a powerful thing. Um, and I, I think that really gets a lot of people's attention when you explain it to them that way. What do you think? What do you think, Justin, besides this great podcast opportunity that you get? I agree with it. You, do, um, you don't get that. You don't get that when you go off on your own is to be on a podcast. <laughs> no, exactly. No, no way. No, I think... Uh, the one thing that I've noticed is being down here, and I know you probably can't tell if you're watching or listening, but the energy, the energy of the students coming through, the energy of advisors coming through, I think, you know, there's a lot of momentum here. And I think that that's something you don't get when you're, when you're on your own trying to, to build something. You feel like you're part of something. You feel like you're helping the students um, as much as they're helping us as well. So, um, you know, I think it's just, again, trying to be part of something that's got good momentum and a great mission behind it. That's, uh, that's why. Doug, that's your space design. I was going to, like the yeah. Hayworth and you and your team did your space design, made it feel energetic in here. That's all credit to Doug. I was going to say, he's just talking about the juice. The ju yeah, the juice. It's it's a real thing. Um, the M&Ms don't hurt. M&Ms on your desk. That's right. M&Ms on the desk, peanut M&Ms. Uh, you want to be that that guy or gal who has the peanut M&Ms um, on your desk. So you want to, maybe we should talk a little bit about, um, about oh, just one thing you said though, Tom, about the you know the buying the business and then it becomes a storefront. We just actually had a conversation with a, a local CEO here and a banker, and uh, you know someone who sold their bus business recently to a to a someone that they m didn't really feel like was a great fit, but the price was really good. And uh, this individual who sold told the banker that they felt after they saw what happened to the business. The term was embarrassed. Embarrassed worst decision of life is what what they used. But yeah, right. Um, yeah, I mean that's a that's a real that's a real and that's a point of, that's that we, we we talk about that. But that is a real point. I mean that's our the structure of the fund for Sleeping Giant. Mm -hmm. That's the whole mission of of that. Um, so how how do you guys hope that sellers see you as you go out there in in, in terms of that? Right. So you guys are going to go out there um, and we'll have future searchers and sleeping giant capital. And we're all kind of working on this together, right? All, all four of us uh, constantly, the messaging and, and just communicating to people about what you're going to do. Uh, and particularly sellers. So how, how, what, what do you think is key there? To try to get the message across as quick as you can, because when you, when we, so far in the search, when we're reaching out to businesses and, and people that we don't know, the immediate reaction is you're just another a uh, broker sending out uh, 5,000 emails every week. And, they, and it's so easy to be caught up in that, uh, with that identity. Uh, the quicker you can get to them and help them and understand that you have a longer term focus and that you're investing in the community and you really want to keep a West Michigan business, West Michigan based. Um, just try to separate yourself from that conversation that, uh, that you're not there to go in and, and uh, turn and burn and grow it up real quick and flip it and, and do the things that a lot of the, 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 you know, the PE firms are known for. Um, it just as soon as you can get to sit down and explain uh, the mission. Justin, anything to add? I don't think I'd add anything to that. Honestly. <laughs> that was pretty well done. That's pretty good, yeah. In, in his late <laughs> night DJ voice. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Cut so, that and, and paste it. Justice. Yes. Yeah, so let's talk. Let's talk more about that that searching um, process. Tom, you're you know Justin is just getting ramped up here. You, you've been at this for you know uh, not not really that long, but you know a, a little bit of time here. Uh, I'm curious what you see on the seller side of the equation that you know it, folks who might be listening who might be interested in selling their business or they know someone who owns a business. What do you see as as challenges or um, barriers to having a productive conversation about from the seller side on selling their business? What have you seen that there are complications that they should be aware of as they go thinking about bringing their business to market? Well, the, 
there's a lot of family involvement. People are concerned about their employees. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of fears uh, uh, from the sellers. Uh, but you know, the, really, the the biggest issue is just trying to get them to even trust that you're actually really someone who would want to own and operate the business, and not someone who's just coming in to try to flip, or to try to make some quick commission on some transaction. Just getting to the owners is probably the biggest challenge right now, to, to help them understand where you're coming from, and. It, emails, um, uh, voicemail, nobody's going to answer the phone. Uh, just trying to get, get that connection and, and get through to a decision maker, knowing who the decision maker even is. Um, those are the, those are some serious challenges. And that probably stems from what we see a lot of, and you hear all the stats around is the, you know, is it 80%? What is that number of, of small businesses that don't have a succession plan? And so, you have all these, then you run, you kind of, not only is that a, a, a challenge to, you know, for us, you know, or for Sleeping Giant and for you guys, but then it's a challenge on the seller side because who who is the owner? How are they aligned? Whose interests? How is this all done? And how are we going to bring this? And then you just have all of that, which then creates challenges for folks who actually do want to sell and, and want to have a nice, have a nice um, payday, you know, from that. Um let, maybe let's talk a little bit about any challenges that you've faced so far, Tom. Um, you've kind of spoken, you just kind of spoken to some of them, but I mean, entrepreneurship is not, not for the faint of heart. So um, maybe on, on your search process or even on the deals that you did before, what are you, what do you see as the big roadblocks and challenges that you're facing or you likely will face? The, the, the things that we've run into so far is just trying to make sure that we have companies that fit the, the, uh, the profile that we're looking for. Uh, that makes good logical sense because not every company that's out there for sale really meets your um, investment thesis. And I think really being very, very finite about what it is you're truly looking for and trying to make sure that the companies stay within that. Um, you can't bounce around pizza shop to janitorial service to uh, automotive supplier just because they happen to be for sale. Um, Why not? Um, I mean, some people talk about being entrepreneur, being entrepreneurial, being opportunistic. What, why, why can't you do that? Well, that that is uh, perfectly suited for a lot of people. Obviously, a lot of people own all those types of businesses, but it really depends on what you want to try to get out of it. My particular um, motive is to be able to find businesses that you can that you can scale and grow and be able to take to another level. And with a lot of smaller businesses, that's difficult to do. So I, I got a question for Justin particularly. As you were making that decision to leap out of uh, corporate America into executive and residence to hopefully soon a uh, small business owner, what would you tell yourself three weeks ago that maybe you didn't expect because you just made this decision? Yeah. So, or, or four weeks ago, or, or go back maybe even three months, uh, emotions, feelings that you go through, some challenges stepping away from work, all that kind of stuff. So what would you, what would you tell your previous self three months ago that here's what to expect or here's what to be nervous about, or here's what to walk through? Yep. So I think, um, you know, on the corporate side, there's, there's obviously that safety net. So that's the, that's the one thing is just to, um, that you'll be a little bit nervous about as you make this decision. But again, as I, as I mentioned earlier, just, just knowing that um, this is going to make you better, you're going to learn something from it. And hopefully, the outcome's great. And if it's not, you're going to you're going to learn something great from it. So, um, I think that's one. Number two would be, I think, as you get into this, just to be very clear as to why you're doing it and what you're looking for. To Tom's point, we're not looking for everything. Uh, so to try to really narrow your criteria and then be able to communicate that. Um, I think the communication part of this is really important on how you communicate to a seller. How do you communicate to um, someone in the industry about what we are all about, what we're looking for, and um, how we're different than, than others. So I'd say somebody that's interested in this to, to spend time on on that communication uh, piece of things. And then the last thing is just uh, family and friends. I think there's going to be some people that are, are really excited for you. And then there's going to be a lot of other people that say, man, you've got a, you've got a good setup. You've got a good job. Why are you, like, why are you leaving? That's crazy. And, um, you know, I think just making sure that whatever you're feeling in your gut, that you're true to that. And, um, you know, those people, they want to see you win, but they, they want, you know, <laughs> they're nervous for you. And so um, just to make sure that, that you're, um, you're thinking through all those things and that you're, you know, again, t that you're motivated to do this and that your heart's in the right spot and that it'll all work out, um, you know, I think in the end. So I, I got to, I'm going to follow on because you both said communication, get to the message quickly in the last two comments. And with the choir class, especially this semester, 
both of you took it previous semesters, but this semester I've really hammered home, get that target statement down, get that early communication down. Can you guys elaborate now that you've kind of stepped in and working, communicating with brokers, having meetings, how important is that to get that communication down to like the finite lettering and, and fasting and why? <laughs> It's critical. It's critical because the the, the brokers don't want to have some open ended question around what you're really trying to. They don't want to waste your time. They don't want to waste their time, and you you've got to dial it in as as tight as you can possibly get it. And uh, and it's a challenge. Uh, but the the tighter you get it, the the easier it is for everyone to accommodate. And if you're working with the brokers and they know exactly what you're about and what exactly what you're trying to accomplish, you're going to get a better result. And so Justin just tweak that question a little bit. You're right at the start of this and we're just putting this together with you. How much more work is it even after the, the, the you know, I've watched you and Doug spend hours on a whiteboard to get this right, you know, behind, kind of behind the scenes. But, you know, talk about your experience there. How, how, how difficult is that even after a whole program on some training around it? Yeah, I, I think it's it's really difficult. I mean, it's it's really kind of starting your own business, right? You're starting, what's the story of, of Justin and what are you looking for? And also, when you're talking to a seller, why should they believe you? Like, how can you take their business from what it is today to what it will be in the future? How can you share that vision and say, hey, I've had these experiences that will help, you know, help you grow um, or help us grow this business? And so, um, yeah, I think you've got to be really intentional about um, understanding where your skills are. And so for me, it's marketing and sales and M&A. So I'm looking for businesses that need that um, kind of injection in the arm to, uh, to grow their business. And so being able to, you know, to get to the point and be able to share that same communication, but to very different people, to a seller, to an attorney, to a CPA. So being able to, to have that similar communication, but uh, tailored to different people, I think it does take a lot of time and um, kind of building that uh, little mini business plan out. So I got one more question, Doug. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep pushing these yeah, guys now. Yeah. So, so flip that around. A seller is looking for someone to sell to. What should they expect from interacting with you and Sleeping Giant Capital that maybe is unique or different or what, what kind of experience do you think they should go through as they reach out to you? What, what, what are you pro providing them and giving them? I think the big differentiator is that not hoping and, and dreaming to be able to do a deal, that it's, uh, that it's intentional, there's capital, uh, there's the staff and the time to be able to get the deal done quickly. Uh, that it's not going to drag out, that we're not coming at it with a professional focus. We, we're coming at it with, with a team that's ready to get a deal done. And I think integrity, and I think a lot of owners are looking for that. They're looking for people that are, are really purposefully there to get a deal done that benefits both sides and makes good business sense. Justin, what, 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 is, what is, can an owner expect from you or what should they expect from you when, when, when they email you or call you or respond to one of your emails or calls, yes. you know, that process, what, what should they, they expect from you? I, I would echo Tom's comments. And then the only thing I would add to that is I think we're going to keep it more personal than most. You know, we can, if you're selling your business in Coldwater, Michigan or Grand Rapids, like we're, we're going to be there. We're going to look at it. We're going to appreciate the employees because we're all Michigan. I mean, Derek, well, we've adopted you into Michigan, but all of us are, exactly. are Michigan born and raised. And, um, you know, we want to see this state succeed and we want to be a big part of that. So I think that's another thing that's, that's different is we're going to be more, I think, personal than most. And, um, and, and so I think that resonates with sellers who have, you know, it was a very emotional decision for them. You know, this has been, most of these people have run businesses 20, 30 years, and um, they want to make sure that they see something in the new owner that, that they believe in because, to your point, they don't want to make this big mistake for their family. They want to make sure that their employees are taken care of and that, um, that they believe in the, the path forward. So I think that's something different versus um, some of these, these bigger corporate shops that are going to do things a little bit different. Maybe we should... Uh Maybe we, we, we talk a little bit about leadership and then we, we wrap up. Does that sound about, is that about right? Did we miss something? Uh, we missed a lot of things, but. You want to keep going? No. I'm, okay. Uh, Doug, I asked too many questions, I think. So go ahead. No, Doug. no, no, no. I'm just, uh, you know, I know we, um, we have limited time here. So the, let's talk about, we're a leadership, we're a leadership podcast. I guess, or is that what we, we call ourselves a leadership podcast still? Sure. Okay. Uh, 
so I'd be curious from both of you, you both have run companies, been, you know, led teams, led, uh, you know, large groups at, at corporate um, companies. What's your, what's your leadership lesson that you like to leave listeners with or a leadership insight that you've had that, that you've served you well as a leader? I, I, I would go with the, the, the thing that took me a long time to figure out was loyal to, loyalty to employees versus making sure you've got the right people in the right seats. And that's something that uh, is so powerful that you have to be very critical of the needs of the organization, the needs of the employees, and making sure that you have the right people in the right places because the, the loyalty to a misplaced uh, person um, is dysfunctional. And it doesn't mean that they have to go somewhere else to just make, make sure that their skills are matched to what their requirements are. And I think that's so powerful that you, you, you really sit back and assess and make sure that everyone is in a position to be able to succeed. How are you chosen? Well, I think, uh, to me, the leader sets the pace of the pack, I think is probably, um, you know, so the, the, the speed in which you work, um, you know, how you operate, that's going to be the, the tone that you're setting for the organization. So I think, you know, how you show up every, every day, you know, do you just race past everybody and go right to your office? Are you saying hi? Um, you know, you have to be intentional about your pace and, and the pace you're setting because um, you're inevitably going to set the, the pace for the rest of the pack. So pace, so the phrase is pace of the pack? No. The, what is it? No, the pace of the leader sets the pace of the pack. Pace of the leader sets the pace of the pack. Mm -hmm. You heard that before? Is that, did you come up with that? No. Oh. Have you heard that before? That's I, I like that one. Uh, yeah, it's it's a new one I've heard. Uh, I haven't heard it before. It's an interesting one, especially because certain packs like, but like usually, isn't it the wolf leader? Like yeah. leads from the back. Yeah, but he still sets the pace. But he he, he it's a di it's in a different way. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Do you it's have like, any other? It's like a Peloton, Doug. Are you on the Peloton? I'm not. I'm not. But my son is on Zwift, and Tom and I have talked about that. Nobody knows about that, but um, I, I think to. I don't know. I don't want to bash Peloton. So I was going to say, I was going to say, I think, I think to, to someone like Tom, Peloton's not, a, not <laughs> aggressive or not, not uh long distance skilled professional, like hardcore enough. How's hardcore enough? It's entertainment. Uh, what? Yeah. It's entertainment versus, <laughs> versus, versus Tom. Tom is going to, you know, last weekend he told me he froze doing some cycle in minus or in 30 degree weather and pure rain and a mud ride that took him two hours longer. And he went home and just, sat in a bath and then he just told me he's going to do it again this weekend got to get it right this time <laughs> he's got to get <laughs> same temperature same rainy conditions same mud mud trek so interesting yeah well so let's wrap up uh i mean we, we I, I think that we should we'll probably do another podcast uh with these two gentlemen after they they, they close their their deals well, right what we should do is like the night before closing we should just have them each of them on and then the, like two weeks in have them on and then like six months later have them on that'd be fun yeah kind of behind the You'll scenes see how much more gray my hair gets over uh yeah. over the course of that time. yeah careful careful doug's turning 40 soon i finally get to throw it back in his face <laughs> he's gonna be gray in no time <laughs> yeah i saw i saw a text from you last night saying that you were gonna gloat you, you wanted to take me out to drinks for my 40 just so you could rub it in my face correct that's the exact terminology that's right if you guys want to come you're invited i have no inside jokes on derek now because i can't refer to him as old because i'm but i'm not yet 40 yet so i'm not you got like a week no, i got a yeah pretty close but um, oh see did you see the depression set in there and that answer he <laughs> reflected that it's coming coming fast i'm gonna be i, I want to be like just like just you know old but with the energy and vigor and enthusiasm of tom yep that's good. There you right. Go. So uh, let's wrap up. Let's wrap up with uh, some rapid fire questions. Uh, one word answers. Um, Justin, we'll start with you. And then we, we, you guys each, each will answer. You ready? All right. Your favorite leader. Tom Izzo. Oh, gosh. My favorite leader. Um, I don't know that I have one off the top of my head. It's not an acceptable choice in this podcast. Uh, it's not acceptable? No. You can pick one. It doesn't need to be like, you know, if you have others, that's okay. You can pick one. Well, let's just go with the person that I really learned a lot from, Stephen Covey. Yep. Uh, the Stephen Covey from Seven Habits, right? Yes. Yeah, how they pick the people up. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, uh, Justin, courage or compassion? Courage. Courage. 
uh, idea, great ideas or great execution? Execution. Yeah, execution every time. Every time. No, no doubt. Every time. <laughs> a, a word to describe your leadership style. Approachable. Diligent. Uh, are you a night owl or early bird? Early bird. Early bird. Uh, if you were going into a dangerous jungle and it was a business task, who are you bringing with you? Warren Buffett. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get out of it. <laughs> buy, buy something to get out of it. I don't know. Uh, who am I bringing with me? Well, anybody on the planet. Anybody. Oh, uh, anybody. Oh, gosh. Um, Jamie Dimon. Mm. Like do, do you notice they didn't say Doug or Derek? <laughs> <laughs> well, with some people with some I, I mean, deeper pockets. I, mean, I think we need to reconsider what we've uh, what we've chosen here. Okay, <laughs> uh, right venture for us, Doug. Yeah, I think so. So, uh, uh, and the last one, um, Justin. If there was an animal, wait, wait. I want to ask a couple more. Okay. <clears throat> Driver or putter? Putt for dough. Putter. Okay. Uh, Ten speed or mountain bike? Ten speed. Mountain bike. Oh, see? Okay. I, I, I'm out, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> coffee or water? Ooh. I can only have one cup of coffee. Coffee all day long. <laughs> all right. So if there was an animal that represented your leadership, what would be that animal? Oh, God. I'll go with a uh, tiger. Why a tiger? <laughs> I don't have, this one's tough, guys. I don't think I have a... Skip the Tom. Okay, we'll come back. Okay. All right. Tom? Draft horse. A what? Draft horse. Draft horse. What's a draft horse? Just so I know. I know it's a horse, but... It's a massive 2,000-pound animal. That that Why is it called a draft horse? It, it's uh, up front and people draft off it? Like a, uh, no, it, uh, because it carries the heavy wagons can carry a heavy load. And why do you pick that for you, Tom? I just did can carry a heavy load. Carry a heavy load. How about the so so Justin, do you wanna do you wanna share with us why Tiger? Yeah. Agile. Yeah. Strong. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I can think of. I I think from a from a quick thought peg of like, yeah, I can see that. I, Tom's draft horse, I'm gonna go Google it, but I think it fits really well. I, I think so. I mean we've had all kinds of animals, but like the draft horse and yeah, yeah. he's been thinking Tom. about that one. Yeah, it suits him. I think you just look at him; it's like there's my draft horse. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna add one more just for for fun, because I do this with my students. So if if there was a sound Ooh, that great. captured you, what would be your sound, Justin? I like this question. He does it to our employees when he hires them, and then people are like, "What is he talking about?" My sound. My sound. Do you want? Do you want? Yeah, go ahead. Why don't you start, Derek? I, well, I always answer the same way. I, I, I love the sound of, of people running in, in, like, quiet in the forest. And the footsteps, you hear them shoo, 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 shoo. Okay. efficiently. They're coming fast. They're coming at you. You know, it's getting the energy up, a little bit of fear in there. Is, you know, something's out there. That's my, that's my favorite sound. And I hear it in the morning when I'm running. Like, I don't run with headphones on, so it's just like that efficient foot sound. I love it. I would say, so there's a sound. This is pretty, a lot of people probably haven't heard this sound, but it would be, uh, at night, Mackinac Island, you'll hear the horses clip clop at night on the road. Mm. And to me, it's like all hours of the day you're hearing those footsteps. So I think to me, it's again, like the steady, mm. steady sound keeping after it. I like it. Tom, what would be your sound? I'm going to go with Maserati coming off the starting line. Ooh, mm. that's a good sound. And, and give us the meaning behind that. Power. <laughs> One word. That's all you need. Power. I'm glad that I asked Derek first because I was going to actually like make a noise, <laughs> which would have been super <laughs> awkward. That, that, one, I, 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 that one takes a little more thought. So I thought I would have, I, I tried to pinch in there for you because I saw the look on Justin's face and it was like, I, I thought he was getting ready to make a sound. So I jumped in and just said, well, before this happens, let me, uh, no, that's let, good. let me give you, you mine. But, but I, I like the, the clip clapping of the horses. That's a good sound. And the Maserati off the starting line. All gonna, good sound. So I'm gonna. Uh, that, that's going to be my addition to the um, what I do with my students. 
is uh, I'm going to make sure that when I ask them a sound that they actually have to perform the sound yeah. at the same <laughs> totally. time. So, perfect. All right, great. Well, uh, great episode. Great first first time here in the uh, in the studio. Uh, Shout out to come. LBS Media Team. LBS Media Team Doing for going things. zero to one, and we're, we're excited to see how things, as things develop. Uh, and appreciate the time, uh, Tom Garrett, uh, Justin Murray. Thanks, Doug. Very good. Thank you. Executives and residents, uh, Sleeping Giant Capital.